In Module 5 of New Testament Survey, we turn to look at the letters of Paul in the New Testament, particularly um, his famous letter to the Romans, as well as his two letters to the church at Corinth, 1st and 2nd Corinthians. There are three critical themes that emerge in these texts that are central to Paul's understanding of the gospel and what Paul means by salvation in Christ. These are the themes of the righteousness of God, justification by faith, and the new creation. Smith and Kim, in our reading for this module, do a really good job of addressing the first two of these, the righteousness of God and justification by faith. And so what I want to focus on in this lecture is the significance of saying that for Paul, salvation in Christ entails what he calls a new creation. But first, we need to ask the question, just what is salvation? as Paul understands it. The traditional way of answering this question within modern interpretations of scripture is that salvation is focused primarily on the individual person and the individual's repentance and faith. A famous passage that is often referred to here in making this argument is Romans 10.9, where Paul says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Using passages such as this and other passages that focus on human faith and repentance in Paul's letters, many interpreters have had the tendency to focus upon the individual's faith and to imagine salvation primarily as a setting right of the relationship between human beings and God and even between God and the individual. The underlying assumption of this interpretation is that there is a problem with humanity, which we call sin, and God acts to rectify or to set right that problem, salvation, by transforming the individual human being. Now, while it is true that Paul addresses in his writings, the problem of human sin, both at an individual level and at a corporate level, the level of humanity as a whole. When we look deeper into the book of Romans, we find that for Paul, the scope of salvation is much larger than human beings. Instead, the scope of salvation is, for Paul, what we might say is cosmic. To say salvation is cosmic is to say that salvation has not to do just with human beings, but with the whole world. And so when Paul speaks of salvation, he speaks not so much of the transformation of the human being, but of the transformation of the world itself, which he calls the new creation. The key text from Paul for understanding this idea of Paul's cosmic view of salvation is the chapters 5 through 8 of the book of Romans. In chapters 5 through 7 of Romans, we find that for Paul, the main problem is the way in which the world has become captive to, to two twin powers, the powers of sin and death demonic powers that have, according to Paul, made their way into creation itself through the original disobedience of Adam and have set themselves up as basic elements of this fallen creation and as the rulers of this present world. Jesus Christ alone, through his obedience to God, is the one who is able to defeat these powers. By God's action in Jesus Christ, sin and death have been overcome, and all of creation, including humanity, have been set into a new right relation to God. 
And so in chapter 8 of Romans, Paul famously says that the Spirit enables not only human beings to cry out to God for redemption, but that all of creation longs. All of creation is crying out to God for deliverance from these powers of sin and death. Chapter 8 of Romans thus plays out like a great cosmic battle between God and the enemies of sin and death. Paul looks at the condition of the fallen world in which human beings are living, and he declares confidently that God has the final word. He declares confidently that nothing has the power to separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ. See here Romans chapter 8, especially verses 38 and 39. So to say that salvation is cosmic is to say that salvation for Paul has first of all to do with God's powerful action to reclaim humanity, but not just humanity, but the whole of fallen creation from the powers of sin and death. And they are reclaimed, and this is the important point, for the purpose of a new creation. Get that. Humanity and the whole of the fallen world are reclaimed for the purpose of a new creation in Christ. To say that Jesus' power over sin and death are enacted in the cross and resurrection to bring about salvation is to say that they bring about a genuine new creation. Christ's salvation brings with it a new cosmic reality in which human beings are set free genuinely to live by faith and to enact God's justice in the world. Without this new creation in Christ, Paul says, the salvation in human be- of human beings is not only incomplete, but impossible. Salvation, then, for Paul, is not fundamentally the transformation of the individual human being's heart and individual repentance. You cannot repent your way out of enslavement to evil powers. Rather, Paul says, human beings can only be delivered And this is the word he uses, deliverance, or delivered throughout his writings. Human beings can only be delivered from these powers by God's action to establish a new creation in which repentance, faith, and righteousness are only then possible. If we understand what Paul means by the new creation in Christ correctly, then this changes how we read other passages in Paul's writings concerning the salvation of human beings. One good example of this is another famous verse from Paul's writings that we encounter in our New Testament scripture for this week. The famous verse, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, in which Paul says, If anyone is in Christ... There is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Readers of the New Testament have been tempted in modern times to interpret this new creation as referring to the individual human being. And so some translators have even changed this passage to read, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. But the Greek text actually lends itself to another translation, which literally reads, If anyone is in Christ, creation is new. To be in Christ is to be delivered into that new creation space that has been brought about by Christ's defeat of the powers that held this world in bondage. A space in which literally all of creation is made new. Salvation for human beings, then, is just this. Deliverance from old, from the old world ordered by the powers of sin and death, and freedom to live in a new creation ordered by the righteousness of God and the faithfulness of Jesus Christ.